Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. How are you today? I hope you can hear me. Uh, let us know if it's too quiet. I'll try to talk more into my microphone. I hope uh, it all works. It seems like there is a slight delay, but um, that's just normal. So yeah, let's get started. We just had the royal wedding. And first of all, why did I not uh, live cast it? Well, I live in the US, so I would have to get up very early. And usually those events, you know, they take for like six hours. That would have been quite boring. So we just waited until after the wedding to look at the outfits and talk about them. So obviously, if you're in a military, if you have a uniform, it's uh, perfectly proper to wear that. Um, if you're not, you have a range of options depending on the degree of formality. And uh, we'll just walk through them and please ask questions as we go along. I also urge you to check out our wedding guides on our website. Some have a lot of videos. I think we did a whole series about etiquette, what to wear as the groom, as the groomsman. And those are very detailed where I walk through step by step what to wear, what not to wear. But I understand it's wedding season. You may have specific questions about do's and don'ts. So we're happy to answer them. All right, let's dive in here. Um, I prepared a bunch of pictures here. Um, you can see here David and Victoria Beckham. Uh, they were at the wedding too. Um, he's wearing a morning coat. And as you can see, the lapels are quite slim with, with a peak lapel, which is uh, perfectly appropriate. This is obviously a modern cut because traditionally they were a little wider, more like what you could see in the lapel width I'm wearing here right now. Um, he has a gray double-breasted waistcoat, which is nice. You can see it's flat at the bottom and it has a lapel. He wears it with a white turn-down collar shirt, somewhat of a spread, um, very classic. And he pairs it with kind of a solid gray tie. Now, I think it would have looked better if maybe the tie would have had some kind of pattern because his morning coat is solid, the shirt is solid, the waistcoat is solid, and overall it's just very, very solid. Um, for my taste, adding a pattern would have helped. The white pocket square on a TV fold is just fine. Um, interestingly, he's wearing a watch chain that he has hooked here to his top button. It's quite unusual traditionally in a double pressed waistcoat. You would have a button in the middle of the waistcoat and you would then hang it in there. You can actually check out a video about morning dress and our morning dress guide that I did. I think I have it in there where I display how it, how it works traditionally. And the chain would hang from the middle and in one end you'd have kind of a fob that would be in a pocket and the other one would be the pocket watch. I don't even know if he had a pocket watch. It's just something that people oftentimes pull out when they wear a morning coat because it's quite traditional. Obviously, they skipped the top hat, and that is perfectly acceptable as well. Now, look at his trousers, or pants, as Americans say. They are really tight, which is very mainstream. You can see um, there's no pleated front. There's just an, an iron crease, and it's, it's really gapping on top. You see these kind of X wrinkles that pull out and the horizontal wrinkles in his crotch area, which is a good indication that this is just not ideal. It's just um, too tight. And um, his shoes are Darby's. You can see it's kind of an open lacing system here, which traditionally you'd, you'd wear black Oxfords, uh, not capto Oxfords, but flat ones or boots. Um, button boots are really nice because they're contrasting. And we did a video about that. We also have a guide on the website that you might want to check out. Um, Someone writes here, I was disappointed no one wore an ascot. Why didn't they wear them? You know, I think there's two kinds of ascots, right? There is the informal ascot, and we did guides about how to tie it and how to wear it, and we also sell them in our shop. And then there is the formal ascot. Now, that's almost a relic from the past. A lot of people wore it in around the fin de siècle, right? So in the 20th. Not, yeah, it was actually the, the 20th century, the beginning, or late 19th century. And um, it's interesting because it has 
a very nice way to look. You wear it with a stick pin, and there are actually two ways to tie it, which um, I made videos about, so you can look at it. I personally find it's a very elegant solution. Um, you wear it with a detachable collar, and it looks a bit like Hercule Poirot in a way, because it's so old school. But um, yeah, I think they could have worn it, they just decided not to, because I think they want to portray themselves as going with the times, all while maintaining a certain tradition. So, um, what should military officers wear a suit or a uniform to a wedding? Really, it's, it's up to you. Um, since you can wear the uniform and, and you're comfortable in it and that's what you want, go for it. But um, if you prefer a morning coat because you really like to dress up, th that is fine too. Um, do you prefer Prince Charles' gray morning coat rather than a black morning coat? Actually, Prince Charles always wears a, a morning suit ensemble, which means a matching morning coat, vest, and trousers. And he's been wearing it for his wedding. You can see him wearing it, I think, at a garden party. Let me just check here. We have a few pictures. Um, yeah, here you can see him wearing it at the garden party, which was the first uh, official event of, of Meghan Markle. And even uh, Harry is wearing a morning coat. Now in the US, you know, we were allowed to believe that a morning coat is something you can wear at Royal Ascot or at a royal wedding, when in fact in, in Britain, people still wear it to, to garden parties. Yes, it's a royal garden party, but um, I love that culture where you can wear a different kind of garment to different occasions, right? And in, in Vienna, for example, you can still wear them more as well. Personally, I think Charles's morning suit is, is very nice. It's very different. And most people who have a morning coat don't have a morning suit. So it's a way to be different. And obviously, it's something that he got custom made because you don't find those off the rack. Um, yeah. So, some people say those narrow trousers make his shoes look odd. Well, with narrower trousers, yes, you have to usually have them a little shorter so they don't puddle on top of your shoe, and it makes your shoe look bigger because it shows more of the shoe. It's a, it's a personal preference, and it's just something that's in fashion right now. Maybe in 10, 15 years from now, it will all change. Let's take a look at the next picture here. This is um, Serena Williams with her husband. I think he's the founder of Reddit. And if you look at his ensemble, it's, it's, it's quite nice, right? He has this kind of self-striped morning coat, nice classic peak lapel, and then a classic collar in white with a pattern tie in silver and black, which is also called the wedding tie because it's a very traditional pattern. So that's, that's perfect. Um, Where is it with a double-breasted waistcoat? Um, skips the pocket square, I definitely would have added the pocket square simply because it creates a more polished look. Um, no boutonniere, which is fine for a wedding because you know that may be reserved for the wedding party. And you don't want to draw too much attention to yourself. It's, it's the bride and the groom's day. So you're not supposed to steal the show from them. Um, yeah, he's wearing, he's wearing a wristwatch, as you can see here, not a pocket watch, more contemporary than his... Um, pants are what is traditionally called a cashmere stripe pair of trousers and um, it doesn't necessarily have cashmere in it mostly it, it doesn't it's usually a wool fabric a wool worsted fabric but traditionally it had some cashmere in it and it had patterns usually stripes of black and gray sometimes white sometimes herringbone patterns small patterns in it there are thousands of different patterns and it just became the cashmere stripe and that's what you wear with a morning coat. You can have darker shades, you can have lighter shades. I personally, I think, have three different trousers. And I all like them all. It's just with certain coats or certain stroller jackets, one looks better than another. Um, as you can see here, he's wearing derby shoes, right? Um, again, I would have gone with Oxfords or boots. And then he went for crazy socks with stars. Maybe that was his kindly, slightly uh, rebellish way to say, hey, I'm here. Uh, traditionally, just maybe, you know, a pair of shadow striped socks or a pair with clocks is actually the most traditional way. A solid pair or a pair with clocks on the side. And with clocks, I don't mean like clocks that you put on your wall. It's it's a, a self pattern. It's usually a stripe, maybe with an arrow and some decoration on the side of your leg. Very elegant, much more unique than a 
solid pair of socks. And you can find a selection of those in our shop. I hope uh, uh, my uh, business partner, Teresa, is adding the link here so you can check it out. Um, okay, next picture. Oh yeah, here, here again, you can see, you, you can really see his uh, shoes, derby shoes, black ones, not even polished very much with almost like American socks with the red, the stars, and, and the navy blue. Um, yeah, personal statement. Then here we have the Argentinian polo player, um, Nacho Figueroa. Um, it's interesting, you know, he opted not to go with a morning coat ensemble. Maybe he didn't have it, maybe it's just not his style. And so he, he went with a double-breasted suit and most double breasted suits out there have six buttons with two closing buttons. This is a four button uh, double breasted jacket with two closing buttons. And it's overall quite nice. It's navy. It has a ticket pocket. And obviously you can see here at the pocket that there must be something that's contrasting. He wears a Winchester shirt. Um, the collar, you can see it's kind of curled and the tip is curled in two. That usually happens when the shirt is not tailored properly and even collar stays won't prevent that end curl it just has to do with the fact when you sew two layers together like this for example and then you wash them and one shrinks more than the other they they just curl in one side um, he has a white pocket square with works with the winchester collar he wears this kind of navy tie which is darker than the suit i'm not a fan of that it's just odd um, maybe is a, a different color of a dark tie would have been preferable Oh, sorry. Now if we go back to his shoes. That's really interesting. So obviously he has much, his trousers are much more full cut, as you can see. Um, and he wears them with Albert slippers. Now, I like Albert slippers. I wear them at home. They're velvet and they're a cool gentleman's staple. But in this case at a wedding, I think it's just the wrong choice for footwear. Um, what... What did you think about Prince Harry's and Prince William's outfit? Can you talk about what the groom wore? I, I will. I'll just walk through the pictures and we definitely have them in there. Um, what must the groom wear on his wedding day? Does he have to stand out the most? Actually, you know, you're the groom. It's, it's your and your bride's wedding and you set the tone, right? If you want to have a barbecue wedding and you want to wear polo shirts, and shorts, then so be it, right? You have the right to do that and, and you can decide that. If you are into clothing and this is like a, one of the few days where you can really shine and it was like that for me, you know, I decided I wanted to wear a morning coat during the day and then I switched outfits and wore a white tie ensemble in the evening because traditionally morning coat is like the most formal thing you can wear during the day at least today. There used to be the frock coat back in the day, but it's not the case anymore. Then in the evening, the white tie is the ensemble to the morning coat. Now, for example, Prince Harry, he wore a black tie ensemble and so did uh, Prince William, right? They didn't go with the white tie simply because they maybe felt it was outdated and it's not their style. And so you can really do whatever it is that you want to do. Most men probably go with a suit and I'd say, you know, if you're um, thinking of making an investment that you can't just wear for your wedding day, but also in the future, I think a charcoal, dark charcoal three-piece suit is a really good investment because the vest or the waistcoat adds a certain element of formality. But um, you can wear a suit later on in business or for funerals or other events that require a dark, serious suit. Um, um, that being said, please check out our video on what to wear as the groom, where I walk through step-by-step -step all the things that you can wear specifically. Um, do we have to wear suits at a wedding? No, I, I think I answered it. It's up to you. Um, Prince Charles was the only person wearing matching gray morning suit. Why was he the only one? You know, it's something that he has, and it he is a great example of investing in a wardrobe and wearing it over and over again. You can see repeatedly pictures of him wearing, you know, overcoats that he had made 20 years ago. And it's the same with his morning suit. This is an old morning suit. You've been seeing it at Royal Ascot for, for years, right? And he just keeps wearing it and that's that's his style and that, that what he wears. 
as you know the father of the groom obviously he and the the future king um, he has a certain status where, where he can pull certain things off that other men maybe couldn't right I would say on, in a regular wedding maybe the father shouldn't try to outshine his son but um, he's Prince Charles so he just goes with it um, can I wear patent leather shoes in the afternoon? Well, patent leather is typically something you wear in the evening, right? So you wear it with a tuxedo, with, with a dinner jacket, or with a white tie ensemble. And um, you always have this rule like um, no brown after six. And so if the wedding was in the evening, you would start, you know, you, you, you'd wear that. If your wedding starts, let's say, at 2 p.m., right, but then it goes into the evening, and it, it stays there, or maybe it's inside, it's not in daylight, and it's inside and you can't even tell whether it's bright or dark outside, then you can definitely wear patent leather. Otherwise, I think I would just switch into patent leather at a later point in time. As a guest, um, it's, it's more difficult to do that often because you don't have rooms to change in. So in that case, I would skip the patent leather, go with, with a black calf leather that is nicely polished. Um, Dijon Skinner of Silver Roman Harris uniform. Do you know them? Um, yes, I've, I've I've been to their store on Savile Road. They gave me a tour of everything. They specialize in in military tailoring, and so that's what they do really really well. And um, yeah, so it it made sense that he had it. You know, made bespoke for him, um, looked great, um, and overall, I think he 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 cut a a good figure in it. I mean, it was very dark, so it was hard to see the details on TV, I think. But um, if we look at his uniform, I think um, we, we had it. Yeah, we had it here, right? So um, I'm not a uniform expert, especially on in British military uniforms. So you'd have to talk to someone who really knows stuff. It's usually everything is very specific. Everything has its place and everything is there for a reason. So, yeah, that's what he was wearing. Um, his brother was wearing a similar uniform. And, um, I mean, you, you, they even have spurs, if you look at it, right? Very old school. And I mean, uniforms were always designed to be impressive, right? It, it was something where people looked at and felt like, wow, you know, this is something. And it, it made people feel like, I want to wear this uniform and I want to join the military just so I can wear this uniform. Um, what would you consider summer formal? Now, that's a good question because sometimes weddings are extremely hot, right? And so it's important to, to not just sweat with the huge sweat stains underneath. And I believe you can go with a fresco suit. Fresco is a material that is made out of wool, but it's a very open weave. And because of that, you feel every breeze. I would also suggest you go with a half-line jacket, meaning there's no lining in the back, so you can really get that breeze. You can also feel it on your legs. It's really, really nice. Um, they come in weights of like 10 ounces. We did an older article about it. I have some fabric here, like in a tobacco brown that I'll make into a, a summer suit. So I'll, I'll write more about it. But it's a, it's a wonderful material and you can wear it as a general summer suit. Now, if you do not have that, right? If you don't have a fresco suit, there's also material called tropical worsted, which is likewise somewhat open and very lightweight. Now, with a lightweight, you get a lot more um, affinity to wrinkles. And the fresco has the advantage that it's usually a little heavier. And because of that, it doesn't wrinkle, but it keeps you cool. And, and I like that. Otherwise, good general tips are skip the vest. Go with a very thin shirt. Um, ideally, not with double cuffs, because the double layer of cloth at your wrist really, really insulates. If you're in the south, you may be able to pull up a seersucker suit. But it's very loud. And again, you don't want to steal the show from the bride and groom. So unless you know that it's something they like or encourage people to wear, I would stay clear of that. Um, otherwise, go with single-breasted suits, not double-breasted, because again, double layer of cloth keeps you warmer. Um, sometimes people like to wear an undershirt underneath the dress shirt, just so the sweat is absorbed more. It sounds counterintuitive to add another layer um, when it's hot outside, but it's it's definitely something that, that works, and if you 
I have a lot of issues with, with, with sweating, maybe that's the right way to go. Um, yeah, that's basically what, what I would suggest. And if you have specific dress codes for weddings, such as, you know, beach formal and something like that, please check out the specific guide we, we just did. And um, in our um, wedding section on the website, we really have a lot of different things where we all break it down and we, we cover some aware and what you can do with illustrations and pictures. Um, who do you think was the worst dressed? Honestly, I think they had like 600 guests and I haven't looked at all of them, so I couldn't tell you. But uh, let's take a look here at, at Harry and, and Megan. Um, so he's wearing a velvet dinner jacket, which is nice. You know, it's a little, traditionally a little more casual of a character. He's a younger uh, man. I think he's my age. And so he decided, you know, I want to wear this and I go for it and I applaud him for it. You know, his shirt is, is very simple. You can even see like buttons here on the fly. Traditionally, they would have a, a hidden fly so you couldn't see any buttons at all or you'd have studs. Again, it's not something that he wears. He also skips the cummerbund or the waistcoat, which I think is sad because the single breasted jacket that he wears open show us a cummerbund because otherwise you see the waistband of the pants and I'm not a, not a big fan of that. Um, I think he also wore cap toe shoes, which um, isn't ideal, right? I mean, it's probably something he had from other functions, but the difference between evening wear is usually that you don't have that cap toe. And if you wear black tie regularly, I suggest to invest in a shoe that is either ideally patent leather, black, without a cap toe, because that's a traditional evening shoe. And the other one is just something that you already have and you wear to, because you don't have the appropriate shoe. Um, all right, next picture here. That was Prince Charles again with, with Meghan's mom. Um, yeah, very nice ensemble. As you can see, he's wearing a boutonniere. He has a tie stick pin. And, you know, it's a suit. It has a white shirt. The tie has a slight pattern. Very, very nice. Um, pocket square folded with a slight pattern. He wears a pinky, you know, his pinky signet ring on the right stacked with his wedding band. And we just did a um, video about signet rings and how to wear them, so you can check it out if you're interested. Um, interestingly, he wears it with a pocket watch. Not, not a pocket watch, wrist watch, not a pocket watch, and some cufflinks. Also, if you look at it, he actually has, these are Oxfords, but these are half brooks, right? There's a, a brooked cap toe, which I'm surprised to see, because Prince Charles usually gets it right to the T. So in this case, I would have worn um, maybe not a medallion on the cap toe, but a, a, a quarter brook would have been probably better. You can still wear it, but it's a little, it's a little more casual than a cap toe Oxford, for example. Um, oh yeah, here's like more of a close up. You can see his, his tie stick pin. It's just something you, you put through your tie and in your shirt, it's, it's decorative because, because the V's, you can really see it very well, which is quite nice. Um, we're inside a church here. And interestingly, you can see he's having this pocket watch chain. So he's wearing a wristwatch and he has the pocket watch chain, which likely has a pocket watch. So he obviously wears it just for decorative purposes, but he relies on his wristwatch. It's interesting that he doubled up I would go with either one or the other. Um, here is Prince Andrew with his daughter. And again, you know, he's wearing a boutonniere, and which is nice because it's it's the wedding, right? It's perfect. He's wearing kind of a tan double-breasted waistcoat. And when you wear that, when you wear a waistcoat with your morning coat, it's nice to leave it open to leave your, your morning coat open so you can show the waistcoat and it's just a nice ensemble, the way it's cut away, you don't have to button it. Um, other than, you know, the tan, you could have also gone with a buff waistcoat, which is a tone of yellow that's really nice. And um, yeah, he has this gold pocket watch chain from one pocket to another that looks also nice. He has that patterned wedding tie. He also wears it with a stick pin. As you can see, compared to Charles, the stick pin sits a lot lower on the tie. I like it when it's higher up because that's traditionally where you kind of see it and, and where you wear it. This is uh, Pippa Middleton and James Matthews. She's the, uh, you know who she is. So they just got married not too long ago 
and he's wearing like this vibrant blue double-breasted waistcoat. Now, obviously, that stands out a lot more, but when it comes to morning dress, pretty much the only way to incorporate a lot of color into your outfit is the waistcoat and the shirt, maybe the boutonniere, and you can also go with a tie. So he obviously went with this rather loud, kind of vibrant blue with kind of a reddish salmon tie and a tie, the tie stick pin. He went with a pocket watch, no, the wristwatch, sorry, getting it all confused here. <laughs> and a white, white pocket square. You can see here his trousers have a cashmere stripe that is lighter, there's more gray with darker stripes. I, I think it's, it's nice, especially for summer, it, it lightens up the ensemble and it can be a better contrast to your dark morning coat. He wore um, proper capto Oxfords, which, which look good. Here you can see the, the Oxfords again, very classic ensemble, small like micro pattern tie. Um, very proper and English. Here is um, an out garden party, right? Again, it seems sometimes that Americans or a lot of people think it's something you can only wear to the most formal events. Well, here it's at a garden party and you see Charles even having a top hat and, and Harry does too with the umbrella. So if you decide to invest in a morning coat, it is, it is actually, you know, a, a good way to wear it again. And once you have the garment, you're more likely to wear it again and seek out events where you can wear it. Um, my opinion, it's a lot of fun because it's just a different garment. Here is like a Louis Spencer, Viscount of Althorp. Uh, this is Princess Diana's nephew. And um, yeah, he's wearing kind of a double-breasted waistcoat with a lapel in a cut that really reminds me of... Uh, a rental. Usually this kind of shape with a button spacing is really something you don't see from a, a bespoke maker, right? If you compare it to uh, Prince Andrew's waistcoat, it's it's here, it has um, buttons, right? They're spaced much closer together and in my opinion it looks a lot better. If we go back here, yeah, it's just something that's quite cheap looking in my opinion. It's kind of an Hermes style tie, the shirt collar a little rolled, again it's that same issue of the, of the shirt collar. Um, white shirt, very traditional, very light trousers, no pocket square, no boutonniere. I think at least go with a pocket square, um, otherwise it looks odd. Here we have James Middleton, he's, he's the brother of, of Kate and, and Pippa. Um, his waistcoat. It's very interesting because you can see here it doesn't just have the three buttons, it actually has four buttons, right? And um, it's it's a nice style. It's just um, he decided maybe he has a long torso and so he didn't want to show as much of the shirt front so he went with, with that option. You can also see there's a, a double button here, right? So morning coats sometimes have that and I talked about that I think before in our morning dress guide in the video. It's a double button that when you button it, it looks very symmetrical and it leaves a bigger gap in between here so you see the tie more and everything else. The other thing this, this waistcoat has, which is uh, very traditional, but you don't see it very often anymore, it's called a slip. It's like a white piece of Marcella fabric that is buttoned in from the back and it provides a certain kind of contrast and element of formality. It really pops if you have maybe a light blue or a light gray shirt. He has a white shirt, so the white on white, you couldn't see it here. You can just see it here at the bottom where it overlaps with the darker colors. Otherwise, tie stick pin in gold, pocket square. And instead of a cashmere stripe trousers, he went with kind of, it almost looks like a mini houndstooth, a mini pepita pattern, or maybe a little small check. And that's perfectly appropriate. That's uh, absolutely something you can wear. And he has his pinky ring on the right with black cap toe Oxfords, um, perfect. The, the gentleman behind him here has black quarter brook Oxfords, um, perfect. Oh yeah, that's, that's the husband of her. So yeah, very, very nice ensemble. Definitely something you could wear to a formal wedding. Here is um, James Blunt uh, waving to the crowd. He decided to um, wear a single-breasted waistcoat in a lighter blue, it's not quite as vibrant blue, and he buttoned the jacket again leave it open, it's probably better. Um, interestingly here, if you look on the side, his cufflinks, it's a, a white double cuff um, and the buttonhole is placed 
not centered, but all the way to the edge of the cuff. So you can get a glimpse of the cufflinks when you wear them. A very deliberate decision by the, the shirt maker to do that. Also, he wore a single-breasted waistcoat and he left the bottom button unbuttoned, which is proper. And we have a whole article about the history about it and why it's done and when not to do it. And uh, in this situation, when he's waving, everything lifts up and you can see there's no belt because a morning coat is never worn with a belt. It's worn with suspenders. A belt with waistcoats in general creates a little gap down here, which is not very advantageous looking. So yeah, quite, quite good. And the gentleman next to him, you know, has one of those waistcoats with four buttons. But again, it looks very much like a cheaper rental version. He also left his button button undone, which is not something you would do on a double-breasted waistcoat at a formal event like a, like a wedding. So yeah, um, this is something I'd, I'd stay clear of. Um, Idris Elba, yeah, went with a suit. See, he went with a looks like a three-piece suit or I, I don't actually know if it's quite matching if it's not matching it's not ideal if it's matching it's it's better um when you get a vest make sure the shirt doesn't peek out from underneath because that's always something that looks bad um george clooney um obviously he didn't wear a morning coat he just went with a suit you can see here his shirt collar is way too wide um not not good uh, the tie honestly it looks like a really cheap tie and pocket square set that was pre-folded that you can find at like, you know, the tie bar that come for $10. Um, I'm surprised to see uh, someone with uh, uh, deep pockets like him wear something like that. But um, hey, you know, he's, that's what he decided to wear. It kind of picked up the color of, of his wife's dress. But um, yeah, surprised. Otherwise, it's um, the suit color I think is great for for summer because it's it's gray right so it's somewhat formal but it's not so dark so when, it, when it's an outside wedding you don't overheat um, you can see here his lapel has a break which is a good indicator that there's not enough room in the chest when you wear a lapel it, it shouldn't get that break it should have like a nice curve now questions are can shirts and other colors or patterns instead of solid white color be worn with a warning coat ensemble as I noticed, there's an Eden Remnant Scarf website. Yes, you can. Um, ideally, go with like a pastel colored shirt or background. You can also have striped shirts or small patterns. Um, you can have slight yellow or even like a slight green, a pale blue, pale pink. Uh, scale is the limit. Something like a, a faint lavender or purple can also look really nice. Um, is a velvet tassel loafer appropriate for wedding as a guest at a nice hotel conference room? I think, you know, if you, there's a difference between like tassel loafers and Albert slippers, right? If you say velvet, it's probably an Albert slipper that you mean with a thin leather sole. It's more of a, a indoor house shoe. I Some people wear them outside, but traditionally it's not something that was meant to be worn in public. Now, if you want a tassel loafer, right, you can, you can wear tassel loafers, there's suede tassel loafers, there are cool things. You can wear at a wedding. It's certainly a more informal item. So I wouldn't wear it to a formal event. I wouldn't wear it with a three-piece suit. I wouldn't wear it with a morning coat. I'd wear it with a, a summery fresco suit. Maybe a suit like George Clooney is wearing. You could, you could pull it off. Anderson and Shepard is Charles Taylor, right? Um, well, he doesn't report to me. He, he used to commission things there. I think in recent years, he also got things from Terminal and Asser, which are traditionally a shirt maker, but I think they also had it made to measure things. So, and again, you know, he, he wears his old things over and over again. So he has that to fall back on. Um, so, yeah, this is again, David Beckham with his double-breasted waistcoat. And I think that's him, yeah. And these are all the pictures we kind of picked out. So now it's time for kind of open questions. We're happy to um, reply to all of them, unless it'll take too long. So I think like 10 more minutes or so, and then we'll wrap it up. How formal do you have to be as a wedding guest? Ideally, you know, the, the wedding invitation stipulates a dress code, right? It tells you what to wear, what to expect, 
uh, you know, dark suit or business suit or whatever it, it may say, if the wedding doesn't stipulate it, the best thing is to just reach out to the host just to get a feel of what, what they do. Because if you show up to a wedding, you know, in a three-piece suit and everyone else around you um, sits there in their shorts or in their seersucker pants with a polo shirt, that's just weird and it makes you feel overdressed and people will come to you thinking you might be the groom if they're just like a plus one and that's just strange. Um, is it expensive to dress like this morning dress or can the average man afford to? Very good question. And um, for most people, yes, it will require an additional investment to what they already have because it's not an item you just have in your wardrobe, right? The good thing is there are lots of vintage items out there. Um, the pr unlike a regular suit, a morning coat is a body coat, so it fits very tightly and it's harder to find a good fit especially in the back that is not constricting, that is not too wide, but not too slim. That being said, since you wear it open, um, it gives you a little more flexibility. You have to pay attention to the length. Ideal length is about the back of your knee. And I've found both of my morning coats vintage. Um, I bought them for really not much money. And... Um, Basically, secondhand vintage, it's great quality, it's all handmade, they're bespoke garments. Not made bespoke for me, but I just knew my measurements and I could find something. And you can even find them on eBay, especially eBay.co.uk has them. Uh, very, 